We have to understand that the European Union, the European Commission can't do anything. Um, and I think that there are two drivers to this process in a way. There is, uh, on one hand, the kind of principled protections of, for democracy that I spoke about before. Uh, the political will for new legislation, as we saw in the Democracy Action Plan, is all about protecting democracy, um, dealing with those threats to of, of media capture that, that we've discussed. But there's another side to it, which is um, that the way, uh, particularly in post-authoritarian countries, media systems are regulated or fail to be regulated, is creating a lot of fragmentation within the European Union and within the European single market. So on the one hand, we have uh, the political will and enthusiasm to uh, protect media freedom, which is supported by civil society organizations, which is uh, broadly, I would say, the majority opinion within the European Union that something urgently needs to be done from the point of view of democracy. But there's also an awareness that the European uh, single market is increasingly threatened on the one hand by uh, the um, uh, existing legislative framework being fragmented, um, by a lack of regulatory cooperation between regulators, um, and uh, that this is impacting on levels of mergers and acquisitions, it's impacting on uh, levels of investment in the media sector, um, and particularly uh, cross-border economic uh, development. So there is an economic cost to a problem of media freedom. There's also a, a, a democratic cost.